G'day people, welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to go through how to remove an EEPROM from a printed circuit board. A lot of people screw this up. So we're going to go through how to remove it quickly and safely, plus not thermally stress the chip. We're going to use chip quick or an ultra low melt alloy to remove the EEPROM today. And we're going to be using either one soldering iron or hot air. But if you want to remove an EEPROM chip using two regular soldering irons, we'll leave a link for that in the description down below. Otherwise, let's get started. We're going to remove this EEPROM chip off this old MacBook Logic board. This is an SOIC package, uh, but this method will also work with the, uh, the TSOP package for the smaller type EEPROMs. And we're going to apply some low melt solder to either side just form a bit of a bead and that low melt solder will mix with the regular solder and lower the overall uh, melting temperature so we should be able to apply heat to both sides with either a single iron or some hot air and then push the chip off the board so uh, let's get cracking we're just applying our ultra low melt solder to these pins here this is chip quick and it will melt between you know 90 um, and 140 degrees Celsius uh, which is roughly 200 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we'll just combine it with the original solder in there and we'll get that end all combined we'll apply the ultra low melt solder to the other side here form that bead again Regular solder uh, melts, you know, at around uh, 230 degrees Celsius. Um, and there we go. And this just brings the overall temperature down when it mixes with the regular solder. And as you can see, the bead on both sides is very mal malleable. It's very liquid. And... What we can actually do here is we can actually push the chip off the board, make sure both beads are a little bit liquid and it should actually slide off quite easily. Or you can also apply some hot air of, of uh, around 160 degrees Celsius or 320 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and that will heat up these two beads and you should be able to push it off with hot air. But, you know, a regular soldering iron at around 160 degrees Celsius or 320 uh, Fahrenheit should be able to melt these beads. So all you have to do, whether you're using one iron to keep these beads more nice and liquid or hot air, you just push it off. As easy as that. The next step is to clean up the board, get rid of all that low melt solder, a little bit of braid, and you just have to put that over the beads and let the braid do its work, suck all that solder up. And then what we do is we hit these pads again with the regular solder. Just suck up any remaining crap there. Then we'll apply a little bit of flux. Go in another time, a second time with our wick and just remove all that low melt solder. Because when we re-solder the little EEPROM chip back on, we'll be using regular solder which will melt at that high temperature. And we don't want any contamination from the ultra low melt solder or chip quick. Um, and the reason we don't solder with, with chip quick is because um, it's low melt, but it's very brittle. So you can't make reliable solder joints with chip quick. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just clean it up, a little bit of isopropylene alcohol, Mr. Toothbrush as usual, and 
There we go. Nice clean pads. And we're all done. Now we just have to remove all that solder from the EEPROM chip itself that we just put on the scrap bit of uh, printed circuit board. And we'll just put something heavy on the other side to weight it down. We don't want the chip sliding everywhere. Clean all the, the excess solder off the legs. Give each leg a bit of a dab. Then we spin our chip around, a little EEPROM chip. And put him against our little weight there. Again, we go in with our little 3mm bevel. Clean those legs up. Dab each leg. And if we have a look, our chip is all clean. That little EEPROM chip. And it can go uh, straight into a little uh, programmer. And you can program that little EEPROM chip up. And then you can uh, mount that back on the, uh, the printed circuit board. And we'll go through that now. It's time to put it back onto the board. So we just drop down a little bit of flux. Not too much, just a little bit. You don't want to go too overboard. And flux just helps the solder flow quite nicely. You can drop your EEPROM back on the board. Then you just align your EEPROM to make sure all the pads on the pins. We're just using a pointed soldering iron for this that looks like it's lined up and we just start in one corner make sure you got the orientation of your chip correct whichever way it goes around and you're probably asking what does an EEPROM do in the first place an EEPROM is a this is a small basic memory chip that all devices have TVs computers, car dashes, and it just carries a tiny, about, a tiny uh, amount of information to basically tell the device um, basic things such as language to operate in, the serial number of the device. Um, you know, if you're looking at uh, a speedo or instrument cluster, it's the odometer settings and the odometer readings, just a small repository for information. And we've just done our first pin there. So what we'll do is we'll do the other pins right down that row. Here we go, one done. The next one done, a small bridge. That happens. We'll clean that up in a moment. That's what happens when I talk and solder at the same time. Bridges can happen from time to time. It's got to go in there with the iron, suck up a little bit of excess solder, and our little bridge is fixed. Let's check each leg on that side. That's excellent. And the best thing to do is we will rotate the whole job 180 degrees because I'm a right-hander. And we'll just finish off the legs on the other side. That's one. That's the next one. There we go. All legs are soldered. Just give it a quick tap. Lovely. All done. Not too hard, not too overly complicated. We got the EEPROM off without thermally stressing it. 
So, um, yeah, that's how you take an EEPROM off safely. Uh, you know, you go through the reprogramming process and that could be done for an, a number of legitimate reason, reasons. You may want to change a, um, a Japanese dash to an English dash or you might, might have had the EEPROM go on a MacBook or something and it's gone corrupt. Or maybe uh, EEPROM's, EEPROM's gone corrupt in your washing machine or, or TV, whatever the case and sometimes EEPROMs need to be flipped out and we really want to change them out without thermally stressing them because if you stuff up the EEPROM you will most likely uh, render the appliance or whatever it is uh, useless. After it's cool we'll hit it with a bit of alcohol get Mr. Toothbrush in, clean him up a little bit A little bit of air to evaporate. And it's all done. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the content, subscribe and share. Don't forget to check out our social media. Other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.